Welcome to our lecture online. In this video, we're going to take a closer look where the equation of the hyperbola comes from. Now, we're going to make it a little bit simpler by using numbers instead of general characters, but at least we'll understand the equation a little bit better. Again, we have the graph of a hyperbola right here, which opens sideways. Notice that the lines of the, of the graph go to the point A and negative A. They would have gone to the point B and negative B if it had opened upward or downward. And of course, A and B come from the equations we have over here. This is the general equation of the hyperbola, and this is the equation of the hyperbola, which is centered on the origin. Then we also have the points C and negative C. Those are the foci of the ellipse. And notice that we can use the equation a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So in the case where we let a equals 3, and b equals 4 as an example, then c will be 5 because 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. Also, the equation of a hyperbola comes from the following. If we draw a line from the negative c point, the point a distance c from the origin to the left, and the positive c point, the distance c to the right from the origin, we draw a line from this point and this point to any arbitrary point on the graph, let's just call it the point x, y, then the difference in the two distances always equals a constant. And it turns out that constant is equal to twice a. Why is it equal to twice a? Well, if we take that point and bring it right down here, then d1 would be this distance and d2 will be this distance. And if we subtract the two, we'll get equals to 2a. And here's the equation that shows you how that's done. If we put the point x, y on a0, then d1 is equal to c plus a, d2 is equal to c minus a. If we subtract the two from each other, we end up with a plus a or 2a. So that constant for a hyperbola that opens sideways is always equal to 2a. Of course, if the hyperbola opens upward, it would be equal to 2b. Now let's go ahead and assume these constants, a being equal to 3 and b is equal to 4, then what would the difference of d1 and d2 be? Well, using the distance formula, we take the distance from here to there in the x direction, which would be x plus 5. Then we take the distance from here to there in the y direction, which is equal to y. We square those two, we add them together, take the square root, and that's the distance equal to d1. We do the same for d2, we subtract the 2, and that equals 2a, in this case 2a is equal to 6. Now what we should see is that this will give us the equation of that particular hyperbola. Now what we need to do first is we need to separate the radicals. So this becomes the square root of x plus 5 squared, oop, like this, plus y squared is equal to 6 plus, when we move it across it becomes plus, the square root of x minus 5 squared plus y squared. Now, of course, we want to square both sides. Unfortunately, we'll still have a radical. When we're done with that, we'll have to do it twice, of course. But when we square the left side, we end up with x plus 5 squared plus y squared is equal to the right side. This squared is 36. Twice the product of the two would be plus 12 times the square root of x minus 5 squared plus y squared, and then plus this without the radical, which would be x minus 5 squared. Ooh, I'm running out of room, plus y squared. Okay, I don't know if you can see that. That's not really good. Two right there, right there, y squared. Okay, now notice right away we can cancel the y squared on this side and the y squared on that side. Then if we multiply these out, let's see what we get. We get x squared plus 10x plus 25 is equal to 36 plus 12 times the square root of x minus 5 squared plus y squared. That's all we need to radical. Then we square this, we get plus x squared minus 10x plus 25. And then again, we can simplify some things because we have an x squared here, an x squared there, a 25 here, a 25 there. Then if we move the 36 over and the minus 10x comes over here, that would be 20x. So when we add these two together, on the left side, we get 20x. And then we move the 36 across, so minus 36 is equal to 12 times the radical of 
x minus 5 squared plus y squared. Okay, so, hmm, can we do anything else? Well, we can divide both sides by 4, and then we can, whatever is left here, 12 divided by 4 is 3, we can bring that to the denominator. So, well, we're running out of room here, so let's move up here. So I'm going to divide both sides by 4, and divide both sides by 3 again. When we do that, we end up with 5x minus 36 divided by 4, that would be 9. Uh, 9 times 4, 36. And then the whole thing divided by 3. And that equals the square root of x minus 5 squared plus y squared. Okay, so now we're ready to square both sides again. So when we square both sides, we get the following. On the left side, we end up with 25x squared minus 45 times 2 will be minus 90x plus 81, all divided by 9, because we have to square that as well. And that equals, on the right side, x minus 5 quantity squared plus y squared. Okay, now, I guess we'll have to square this out. Let's go ahead and square this out and see what we get. So we have 25x squared minus 90x plus 81. Uh, let's go divided by 9 is equal to x squared minus 10x mm -hmm. and uh, plus 25 plus y squared. Okay, now we're going to multiply this side by 9 and this side by 9 to get rid of the 9 here. So we end up with 25x squared minus 90x plus 81 is equal to 9x squared minus 90x plus, that would be 225 plus 9y squared. And now we're lucky because notice we have the minus 90x and the minus 90x, those cancel out now. And now we can go ahead and move all the x's and the y's to one side. So when we do that, we have 25 minus 9, that gives us 16x squared. And then here we have a plus 9y squared becomes a minus 9y squared. And notice it's beginning to look like the equation of a hyperbola. Now we have 225. If we bring the 81 across over here, 225 divided by 81, uh, minus 81, I should say. That's, um, looks like 144. So that would be equal to uh, 144. So that would be 145, that 225, yes. All right, so far so good. Now, 144, that's equal to 9 times 16, right? So 144 is equal to 9 times 16. So if we divide both sides by 9 times 16, divide this by 9 times 16, divide this by 9 times 16, then of course this goes to 1, and here the 16s cancel out, we end up with a 9, so we have x squared divided by 9, minus the 9s cancel out, so we get y squared divided by 16 is equal to 1. And then finally, if we then write this as follows, x squared divided by 9 could be written as 3 squared, minus y squared over 4 squared is equal to 1. And this is the equation of a hyperbola that is centered at the origin, with a equal 3, b equals 4. And that's what we started with. So you can see that, yes indeed, if we take these two distances, d1 and d2, and subtract them from each other, of course we have to take the absolute value in case uh, we have the a and the, y and the x being uh, different in sign, um, then the k is equal to 2a, and then if we then write this using the distance formula in terms of d1 minus d2 equals 2 times a, and we work all this out algebraically, we do get the exact equation of a hyperbola in the exact form for a hyperbola centered at origin with the correct values for a and b. And that is how the equation of the hyperbola is derived. How do you, how do you get d1 equals c plus a and d2 is c minus a? Okay, that, yeah, that's a good question. So if you take this point x, y and move it to this location right here. So if the point x, y is equal to a, zero, so x equal a, y equals zero, then this distance here 
is D1, which means it's C plus A. And then this distance here is D2, which would be C minus A to get that distance. <laughs> yeah, let me draw it. So let me put it right here. Or I, I guess I can draw it up there. Do it over here? Okay, let's try that. I'll try not to. So here's a hyperbola in one direction, here's a hyperbola in the other direction. Eh. Let me move the y axis over a little bit. There, better? <laughs> x axis, y axis. So we're going to put the point xy over here. So this is the point xy. Here's the point c. Yes, all the way down to there. And this is minus C. So then this distance here, so this distance here would not be D1. And this distance here is D2. Right from C to here is D2, and from minus C to here is D1. And then D1 would be this distance here, which is C plus A, because that's the point A right here, right? This is the point A. So then you can see then, that D1 is equal to C plus A, right? And then this distance right here would be this distance minus this distance. So that means that D2 is equal to C minus A. And that's where it comes from. Then if you subtract one from the other, you get 2A. And that's what the constant is. The constant always will be 2A when the parabola, uh, hyperbola opens sideways. Is that still not? <laughs> I will not repeat the word you use, but yes, it's, uh, it's the um, um, physics way of proving this, <laughs> and it works. <laughs> That's the problem when your wife is a mathematician. <laughs>